Hi, my name is Jonathan Clark, also known as DJ Bolivia, and uh, what I'm going to do this afternoon is give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to make a ringtone, if you don't know how to make one of those already, um, so you can make your own instead of having to go out and buy them. Uh, basically, you should probably all know what a ringtone is. It's uh, just an audio file that you can put into your smartphone, into a mobile phone, and then when you get a text message or a phone call or an uh, instant message or whatever, um, that sound will come through, your ringtone will play, instead of the, uh, the old normal telephone ringing sort of symbol or whatever. So anyway, ringtones, I think they first uh, became available on phones in the mid-90s, uh, shortly after cell phones started to become kind of common. And uh, they peaked in popularity in the mid-2000s. 2007 was the biggest year for, for ringtone sales. Um, but of course, sales don't totally match um, their usage because people started to figure out how to make their own ringtones. So sales kind of went down before uh, before you saw a dip in uh, ringtone popularity. And of course they're still they're still popular. Um, there's kind of two forces at work. I mean first of all there's the fact that people are using voicemail or sorry voice telephone a lot less. They're, they're starting to use a lot more instant messaging, uh, texting, um, video chat, stuff like that. So the amount of voice calling per phone in North America has definitely dropped a lot in the last few years. But um, countering this trend is the fact that there's a lot more cell phones in the world and uh, the growth of cell phones uh, is still continuing today. So, you know, knowing how to make a ringtone is still a good thing. Um, if, if you're talking about voice calling, I mean, there's a lot of alternatives out there to n normal telephone calls nowadays because there's, there's Facebook Messenger, <clears throat> there's Google Voice, there's Skype, um, there's Bobsled for Android and iOS, and uh, these these things all basically use wireless to uh, totally circumvent the traditional telecom networks, and uh, so those those have gained a lot of popularity. But we're not here to talk about those today. So basically, there's three ways to make ringtones. One is you can use custom software. Two is you can use iTunes, if you've got an iPhone, um, iTunes will actually make the ringtone for you, sort of. And three, you can use audio software to take an existing audio file, just an MP3 track or whatever you happen to have on your computer. You can edit it, and then you can just plug your phone into the computer, drag and drop the, uh, this new ringtone onto your telephone, and uh, set it up that way. Okay, so basically, there's a lot of phones out there tons of different brands, different models, and to make things confusing, of course, there's a lot of different file formats that are used as ringtones. Uh, definitely not any standard. Now, back in the old days, uh, you know, telephones were far less advanced. Nowadays, with smartphones, a lot of the smartphones are good enough to understand just about anything you can throw at them for a uh, for a ringtone format. So you know, in the old days, you could not put an MP3 or a WAV file or a FLAC file onto your phone as a ringtone quite often. But nowadays, a lot of the smartphones will take just about anything. So some of the formats you might see would be something like a 3GP, which is a video format. Um, you've got MMF, AMR, M4R. Um, QCP, uh, and of course you've got all the audio formats like MP3, FLAC, WAV file. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is find out what your phone needs or what it will take. Um, what we're going to do today when we're working with uh, when we're working with a th third option about creating a ringtone, the one where I actually go in and edit a song and uh, and save that as a ringtone. What I'm going to do is eventually translate that to what's WAV quality file. Um, Windows PCM is a standard WAV format and uh, basically it's the same as a CD. Um, so if you rip a CD there's something called the sample rate um, which is the frequency of sampling. So that's 44,100 Hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. Um, so that's CD standard and then CDs also have a 16-bit sample size. So and, and of course, WAV files on CD or stereo. So <clears throat> if, you, if you have a really old phone and you have to deal with a older format or with the new format but at a lower quality, you may be asked to reduce your sample size, your 
sample rate, or you may be asked to convert your stereo into a mono audio file. All of those are possible, becoming less and less likely these days though. Okay, so basically with, uh, ring with ringtones, what do you need to know? Um, they should be less than 40 seconds long. Uh, they have to be less than 40 seconds long on some phones. Uh, although, a lot of the new phones, you can, you can use a full song if you want as a ringtone, but it doesn't really make sense because most phones, if you have voicemail, if you don't answer your phone after, say, five rings, uh, like 20 seconds, your phone will probably kick to voicemail, and so that ringtone, everything past the, the point where your phone kicks to voicemail, that won't play. So there's no point having a really long ringtone, like a full six, seven minute song, when you really only need, you know, a short period. So most of my ringtones, if I make them, I'm going to make them between 20 and 25 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay, so like I said, there's basically three methods for making a ringtone. You can use custom software, you can use iTunes if you've got an iPhone, or you can cut it up manually. So let's uh, look at those all in turn. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is look at custom software. Now I'm not actually going to go through a package here because they're all pretty self-explanatory, um, but I'll tell you how to find one. Look for a website called top10reviews.com. Um, this site reviews a lot of different types of te technology gadgets, software, stuff like that, and it kind of gives you uh, good suggestions as to what's best in class for a lot of stuff. So anyway, do a Google search on top 10 reviews ringtone software. And this way, this will be good for, uh, like I'm filming this in 2003, this will still be good three or four years from now. So you can see I clicked on the link, and at the moment, you can see right here, Magic's Ringtone Maker is ranked number one. Um, price $19.99. You can see all the software packages here range from about uh, 10 to $30. And if you scroll down, you can see all the different features in each of the packages. Um, good solid rating for Magic's Ringtone Maker. So I think that would be the one that I'd want to check out. You've, you got a, a 9.7 rating, that's pretty high for this website. Uh, compared to a bunch of uh, software down in the fives and fours. So at the moment, that's the one I would check out is Magic String Tone Maker. But since we're trying to figure out how to do this on our own uh, to save money from not having to buy ringtones, uh, you might also be able to circumvent having to even buy software. So let's look at our second choice, and that is through iTunes. And iTunes, obviously made by Apple. Okay, the process is pretty simple. Um, basically what you want to do is you can't, you cannot use a song that you purchased from the iTunes store to make a ringtone this way. Okay, um, so you are a little bit limited in this approach. Now, if you've got one that you bought from the iTunes store, um, what you could do is right click on it and then go down to the option which uh, it doesn't show right here because this is my own music but there's an option that says create ringtone okay so that's the way to deal with with songs that were uh, purchased from iTunes and it costs a couple of dollars to turn it into a ringtone I think so if you have music that you ripped yourself from your own CDs that you bought commercially or perhaps you've got uh, music that you bought from a legitimate service like Rhapsody, Songster, Amazon. Um, so you could have all kinds of songs that aren't purchased through the iTunes store. So anyway, find one of those. Uh, I am going to pick one of my own songs, so I don't have copyright stuff coming up in the video. YouTube doesn't catch it. So, Global Underground, uh, Greg Morish remix. Um, so let's go through this quickly and see how to do it. First thing you do, right click on it. Then you go down to the option where it says Get Info. Okay. Then you click on the option where it says Options. And see how there's a start and a stop time? Well, with this particular song, I don't want to start my ringtone at the very beginning of the song. Um, I'm going to start it at the 8 minute and 15 second mark. This is a long song. And uh, the reason 
I picked that is because I actually looked at this a few minutes ago, so I know that's where I want to start. And for a stop time, I'm going to go for about 25 seconds before it stops. So our stop time is going to be 8.40. Click OK. Now, uh, next thing you do is go on to that again, right click. See the, ver the choice, create AAC version. You're going to click on that. Okay, it just made a second copy. And look at this, you can see it's 25 seconds long. So I know that worked. Okay, so that sounds like it's playing fine. What I'm going to do now is drag and drop that over onto my desktop. Okay, and let's delete it from iTunes because we've got it on the desktop. And our first version of the song that we changed to change the start and stop time, go back into your options and change it back to what it was. So next time that you actually want to play the song in iTunes, you'll hear your whole song. Okay, now we have this thing on the desktop. It's 25 seconds long. That's going to be our ringtone. And right now it's an M4A file. I'm going to change that extension to M4R because that is the extension that iPhones use for a ringtone. Okay, and from this point, what you can do is put this back into iTunes, hook up your iPhone to iTunes, and then click on the iPhone icon, and then just go into your sync. And in sync, you know how you normally sync audio, sync movies, stuff like that. There's an option for ringtones. All you have to do is sync ringtones. That'll put the ringtone onto your iPhone. And then you just go into your settings and you can attach your ringtone to your telephone ring, to an instant message, whatever. Okay? So that's all there is to uh, doing it with iTunes. Uh, pretty easy. Now, let's look at the other way of doing it. Um, Basically, what I what you need, okay, we don't need that now, and we don't need that now. I just put iTunes on the computer here just for the sake of this video. I don't normally use it. Um, so, we don't need that. Uh, what we do need for the next section is three pieces of software, okay? The first one I'm using right now is a piece of software called... Um, called YouTube Grabber. Okay, you can find it on download. Excuse me. You can find it on download.cnet.com, and that's one that is ranked as a fairly good YouTube grabber. And the reason I'm using this is because I want to grab a song that's on one of my own YouTube videos, but which I don't have on this laptop. So make sure you've got YouTube down YouTube Grabber downloaded and installed if you're attempting the same sort of thing. Second piece of software that you're going to need is Audacity. This is a free audio editor and recorder and so you can see there's a link you can download Audacity. I've already got it down here on my on my system. And then finally the last piece of software that I'm going to use is called VLC Media Player. And again if you go to the videoland.org website you can download VLC, another free program. So we're using all free programs right now. Okay, so let's quickly go through the process that I would use to be uh, doing all this. Okay, um, let's see. One thing that I forgot to do was figure out where my video is. So I'm going to go into YouTube. And the song I'm looking for is called When I Grow Old. There it is right there. And there's a couple versions of this. This is one of my own songs, as I said. You can see that's the original version. That's got really bad quality uh, audio on it. There's a link in that particular YouTube to a newer version. That's behind this video, Teardown of Melody Student Center. And, uh, so this, okay. So there's the song. This goodbye. You knew that it was come. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is cut and paste the YouTube URL. I'm gonna open Audio Grabber, paste in, you can see there's the URL, and I hit start. 
And what happens here is this YouTube grabber is going to start ripping the YouTube stream. You can see this blue progress bar. The reason there's actually three different sections of the progress bar going is because you know how with YouTube you've got a choice between different quality levels like 360p, 480p, 720, 1080. Um, those are different streams. So YouTube, YouTube checks your connection and figures out how fast it can stream. Anyway, you can see that the different streams together are all being uh, downloaded simultaneously, so it does this fairly quickly. Okay, there. Successfully downloaded. And let's open the folder to see where it is. Okay, there it is in this folder. Let's put it on the desktop to make this easy. Okay, and we can now close that program. We're done with that. And so if we open this, so this is goodbye. We can see that we've just ripped the entire video right off YouTube. So that's kind of cool. Um, now the problem is though, my ringtone, I want an audio ringtone. So what we're going to do is, um, in one of my basic audio recording tutorials, I explained this whole process already. There's a link in the blog, but I'll just do this very quickly. Um, we will extract a file. Um, so what you do is go to media, go to convert, save, go to this, add, and then find the file find the file on your desktop there it is okay so you've got the address up in here for file selection you don't have to click those you go down to this convert save menu and take the bottom choice convert okay destination file uh, it's going to be on the desktop and we're going to call it uh, djb ringtone uh, when I grow old. Okay, we're gonna. S oh, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a file extension to it because we're gonna export this as a FLAC file. Okay. And right now it's set to export video plus MP3. That's not what we want. Go to this drop down menu, and you can find FLAC. And I'm just gonna double check the settings. I'm on RAW. That's good. Video is off, that's good. Audio is on, that's good. Codec is FLAC, that's good. Um, if it's at a lower sample rate, put it up to 512, so it's pretty decent quality. 4410 is the sample rate. Subtitles, irrelevant. Okay, so we've got the settings we want, and we're going to hit start. Now watch the um, play thing on this. Okay, see how fast it's playing that? What it's doing is actually extracting. So now we can close this. And on our desktop, <coughs> we have a FLAC file. And let's uh, double click on it and see what happens. So this is goodbye. Okay, so we've got the whole song there. So that is excellent. Um, now, somewhere around the this part. I'll see you smile. I'll be gone in a while, but I'll be right here tonight. When I go. Okay, so you can see at this point, which is 48.828 seconds, that is where the chorus starts. And that's what I'm going to use for the beginning of my ringtone. Okay, let's close audition because a lot of you don't have that, and we'll open up Audacity. Okay, so file, open, where is it? DJB ringtone wigo.flag. Okay, so there's our file, and we know that we wanted from about 48 seconds onward is the chorus. So let's first, let's just cut out everything from 45 seconds on. Up, uh, sorry, up till 45 seconds. Let's highlight that and click there to zoom in. And play. Be right here tonight. When I go okay, highlight, zoom again. Oops, let's, uh, there we go. <clears throat> so, right about here is where the chorus starts. When I go okay, so the stuff before that, 
still irrelevant. And just for the sake of tidiness, instead of having it start abruptly, let's take this intro, that first tenth of a second, we'll go to Effect, and we'll go Fade In. Okay, so it fades in and then it hits the chorus. Let's try that. When I go bold. Okay, that sounds good. Now let's zoom out. And remember how I said that we don't want more than 30 seconds roughly? Let's uh been here before. Okay, that's in a verse, we don't need that. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so let's erase all that, and so now we have about 24 seconds of audio. We'll do the same thing that we did at the beginning, but in the reverse, we'll do a fade out. Okay, so if your phone could actually play the full 24 seconds. Won't you please stay with me now? And then it fades away. Perfect. Okay, so there's our file. Now, with most smartphones today, like I said, you don't have to do anything else. We could save this as an audio file and put it in right now. But for those of you that understand audio a little bit, let me show you a little, a couple tricky things that'll just take a few seconds that you might want to do to tidy things up. I just double click to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to go into effects. And the first thing I'm going to do is do some equalization. So, let's do, oh, I'm on it. Uh, let's say that your, your, gra your EQ graph usually starts out flat. Uh, I'm on the graphic EQ, not on the curves. Let's drop out the low end, because your phone does not have good speakers and will not be playing that low end anyway. And the same thing with your high end because the phone is such a bad, has such a bad speaker, you're just using uh, unnecessary bandwidth, basically. There's information in this audio file that is not going to get played by your phone. So I usually roll off the low end, roll off the high end. Boom, okay, that's done. Uh, next thing, what would I do? I would probably want to, um, I'd probably want to normalize it, make sure it's at full volume. So I have to use highlight it all and click normalize. And we're going to normalize the maximum amplitude to negative 0.1. Zero is full volume. So I'm going to go just under at negative 0.1. Okay, and so the file is pretty much at, I guess it was, it was properly mastered, so it was pretty much at the right level anyway. Okay, and there's one last thing that I would probably do if uh, I needed to, and that's right now it's a stereo file. So we will render that to mono. Stereo track mono, it's up in the tracks menu. Okay, so let's uh, see what it sounds like. When I go bold. Okay, still playing just fine. So we've got this 24 second sample. Export, I'm going to export it. Uh, I'm still on the desktop. Now I'm going to, instead of just saving it as a FLAC, which it was before, I'm going to export it as a wave. And if you click Options, you can see there are no options for this particular format. Um, some, it, you're going to need some more advanced audio editing software if you have to downsample, but that shouldn't matter for most, most things. Uh, and you'll have to just Google that to figure out how to do it. It's not too hard. Uh, so I'm exporting this as a wave. OK. And then I'm closing the program. Don't need to just do anything with that. Okay, so now that we have the uh, the ringtone, what I'm going to do is pull out my uh, phone, soon to be an antique, and I've got a Blackberry here, and let's see what happens. I'm going to set this up as a USB drive, and what's happened basically is I've got a removable disc, you can see the Blackberry there, this is a plug-and-play device, and if you open it up and you go into it, you can see ringtones. Now, I don't have any ringtones in there yet, but let's go to the desktop, and you can see there's my ringtone. Yeah, you can see what a difference that was. The FLAC file was 26 megabytes, and by um, 
by taking just a portion of the file and by converting it to mono and everything, even though it's a WAV file, it's only 2 megs. So we drag and drop that down to ringtones. It's been copied in. We can close that and we will eject the Blackberry. Always a good practice. Okay, now inside my Blackberry, I can go into the media folder and I look at my ringtones and I can see Okay, and so all I have to do now is uh, I can basically do the equivalent of a right click and set this up as a ringtone. So that's all there is to it. Um, Blackberry, being a modern phone, uh, will take a normal audio file. So I think that's it. If you've got any questions, just post them in the comments on the uh, YouTube video and I will try to monitor it and I will try to answer them as best I can. Thanks for watching. When I grow old, will you still be here? I'll show you that I do care when I finally settle down. I don't know why you keep telling me it's not right. I just want you to stay tonight. Won't you please stay with me now?